French accent is a loud and proud comedian armed with a French accent. How are doing tonight, language? An energetic accordion to match his personality. How are doing tonight, LGT? And a battalion of jokes that have no limit regarding subject matter, delivery, and crowd interaction. His genius of performing as a rambunctious, wisecracking maniac led him to a spot on America's Got Talent, and caught millions of eyes to make up for the one that he lost. With seven years of playing as this character, Kevin Bennett made a name for himself that I believe to be irreplaceable, simply because his comedy is unmatched. Do not Christian Protestants call it a Catholic catechism? Pulp Fiction. <laughs> I tried to do the Pulp Fiction theme song, didn't work. Back in the early stages of his career, specifically pursuing this valiant persona, his specific tone was very clear regarding his attire, his instrument, and the way in which he spoke. The way in which he dresses initially perplexes you, as if he's a French pirate who loves to play his accordion, playing the accordion in multiple ways to mostly support some jokes with comedic timing that wouldn't be as effective without the instrument. Alright man, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Oh. Speaking in a very thick French accent. Then there is French accent, which is sort of a stereotypical look at me, I'm a French man. That not only matches his attire and gives his joke more of a punch, but makes him stand out as a comic. I had a friend named Bill. Bill was a Native American and Bill was an alcoholic. Not because he was Native American, you racist. He was alcoholic because he had Parkinson's disease. We called him William Shakespeare. <laughs> In its entirety, this tone is a very loud approach to comedy. Not that it leans on being extremely audible as a punchline, although that does occasionally occur, but it's very attention grabbing. It's rapid fire comedy that is very self aware and is mostly not subtle. I told that joke to a friend of mine, he said, Oh, Frat Jack said, that joke is so cliche. I said, Can you put quotation marks around the word cliche? Doesn't that negate the cliche ness? It's so cliche, it's no longer cliche. It's cliche squared. The only time it is subtle is regarding the direction of the joke itself, which leads to an element of surprise, which can result in laughter. I've got a new song for you guys tonight. Would you like to hear my new song? Yeah. All right, here we go. This is my new song. It's called Ellipsis. It goes like this. <clears throat> All right, that was Ellipsis. When a comedian is on stage, it can be very easy to dissect some jokes he or she may lean towards. With some, it may be stereotypes. I don't know if you can tell by my beard, but I'm fat. I don't know what happened. All I did was eat constantly, and then boom, I'm fat. Stories. My parents were uh, obsessed with celebrities, and uh, so, hi, here I am. Um... Or general <laughs> absurdity. Uh, do you, do you, um... The attitude with French accent, however, is literally anything can be a joke. Whether it be out of his own prepared set list. A negative five multiplied by a negative five is a positive ten. Well, I'm not that good looking, negative five. I play corn and do a ridiculous French accent. Multiplied by negative five equals ladies. I'm a positive ten. Or interacting with the crowd. <laughs> These jokes range from wordplay, visual comedy, pop culture references, impressions, anti-humor, or jokes based on the crowd. Wordplay includes puns, pickup lines, and one-liners, which tends to be the majority of it. Visual comedy would be considered any hand gestures or accordion swells. Pop culture jokes mostly relate to Star Wars, and may include impressions. You ever wonder if Darth Vader feels as though scuba divers are making fun of him? <laughs> That's not funny. Impressions are few and far between. So when they do occur, they give some backbone to a joke. Finally, you get to the gas station, explode through the front doors of the convenience store, knocking people over left and right, higgledy piggledy like Chewbacca on a methamphetamine binge. Just... Anti-humor is also available, which while being an indirect joke that involves the joke teller telling something that is intentionally not funny, when spoken with the French accent flair, it becomes funny. I live in an RV with two cats, and I'd like to change that. It's, it's the st I, I lied, there's only one cat. I had to give the other back, I stole it. 
I'm a cat burglar, all right. Crowd-based jokes entails humor that seems off the cuff and is sprinkled with crowd interaction. I think the game chess is racist. White always goes first. All right. That's why you laugh when I stop playing the accordion. That's why I have this thing, all right? I'm saving you trouble. While all of these jokes alone could produce laughter, the common core connected to his act is his accordion. Most of the time, he'll play the same six notes to accompany his performance, occasionally with different note inflections. Halting for comedic effect is another strategy he implements. As to bring more attention to the punchline, You know what they say, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times, okay, shame on you again. I'm obviously retarded, all right? Or lack thereof. Fool me four times, have you got nothing better to do with yourself? In other cases, since he's producing sound from it, he'll play a bit of a song, whether it be an original of his. If you're living on the lamb and you want a can of ham, you could buy a can of spam, but it's a sham. <laughs> or a parody. If Bon Jovi were in a Star Wars, would he be Han Bon Jovi? Leia was a princess with bonds. Her planet blew up, she got thrown in jail and stuff. With the combination of his tone, jokes, and accordion, one can notice a fair amount of strategy at play regarding his stage set. Even though for the most part, his comedy routine is planned ahead. My name is Franz Accent, and I'm gonna tell a bunch of ridiculous puns and terrible one-liners. French Accent is one to interact with the crowd directly, making them feel included. All right, I got this guy. This guy's my favorite right now. He's getting an A. You guys are getting like an A minus. He's got an A plus, and he's coming for extra credit, but it's not actually studying. He's getting cookies, all right? You are not, you can get a cookie, just follow his example. The key is he doesn't focus on himself when doing bits and prefers to write on stage, as in get immediate feedback for possible jokes he may want to keep in the future. He may double down on a joke by rolling with the punches, which breaks the audience's expectations when he targets a person, then immediately diffuses it as to not offend the targeted person. Remember Anakin, concentrate on the moment. Feel, don't think. Feel, don't think? Am I the only one who is incensed that the key to being a Jedi is to act like a woman? <laughs> ladies, 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 don't get mad at me. I just called every woman in this room a Jedi by default. <laughs> This is possible due to his candid comedy, which means that he's truthful and straightforward with his audience of all ages, since he has various versions of his comedy for specific shows. Like the time he did a G-rated show in a church, or when he performed at a bar. In any occasion, no matter the audience, French accent has many layers to his jokes, as in he redirects your attention by derailing a joke, where you think he's gonna say one thing, but he says something else. Do you know what Toyota is backwards? A toy yacht. Do you know what Subaru is backwards? You're a bus. Do you know what Rosie O'Donnell is backwards? Rush Limbaugh. Before he then transitions smoothly into the next joke. I had a girlfriend named Ruth, but then she broke up with me, so now I am ruthless. As if it's one stream of consciousness. All in all, it does show that a lot of thought process goes into this character regarding comedy, whether it be on or off the stage, especially the one regarding America's Got Talent. If French accent hadn't have waited 11 hours to be on stage, I would have never discovered such a talent just as the judges did, as he played in character the entire time. What's going down in Chinatown? Am I starting or we, are you starting? Who's going first? Which led to the crowd booing him at first. I had a girlfriend named Ruth, but then she broke up with me. So now I am ruthless. I haven't even got started yet. But he kept going despite that and played heavily in the moment by interacting with the judges. Listen to that, all right? That's right, yeah! This led the audience to love him, but even still, he managed to get three X's. After a little more banter with the French accent flair, audience is liking me, you two. I don't know. <laughs> a standing ovation spread like wildfire, and because the audience loved his performance so much, two of the X's were taken back. I'm gonna take my X back. God bless because you. I'm gonna take my X back. Thank you. God bless you. Which made the crowd ecstatic. After this incredible experience, many interview opportunities arose. This is where he explained his experience with America's Got Talent, his comedic techniques, and generally bantered with the hosts of the shows. I'm too sasquatchy for my mic. Ah, oh, it's just a whole 
do, cavalcade. You do have that Sasquatch. I do. Uh, just hair, hair and red. <laughs> Along with these forms of content, some other videos on the internet regarding French accent are located on his own channel. Available content here would be vlogs, music, some of his audition tapes for America's Got Talent, and hours upon hours of his stand-up routine. All of these different styles of media each show a different side to him, from character to real person. And that real person is Kevin Bennett. Kevin truly amazes me, not just because of his character, but that he's willing to live out of an RV to achieve his goals and follow his dreams. That alone is incredible. The fact that he writes articles, makes music which includes five albums, and does shows for profit to sustain himself so he can perform as a comedian, shows that he's making his one life count. It shows that he's genuinely enjoying life. Overall, it would be very difficult to match the same passion that is portrayed by French Accent himself. Every single aspect shows that the development of his character has been handled with care over the years, and has improved with practice. What could be seen on the outside as some loud guy on stage, who can only see one half of the crowd at a time, hides a strategic mind that knows how to respond quickly no matter the situation, that communicates with the crowd any way possible, and brings a spectacular form of comedy that has brought joy to millions. Special thanks to my four patrons who support me on Patreon. If you'd also like to help support the channel, go to patreon.com slash mastereth or click the link in the description.